Hi again. Um, so I wanted to talk about something that I kind of need to resolve. Um, so as you can see, I'm trying to plan out this side of the layout. And in doing so, I ran into kind of a question that I need to figure out or resolve or answer before I can actually mount this side um, with the boards. So you might recall that um, this is a four motor controller board controller board for four motors and I had this placed in here um, and however I still have to figure out the placement of the two Arduino boards the Uno and the Mega here and in trying to figure that out I have a few different options but one that I kind of stumbled upon is seeming pretty attractive right now so basically I could mount this above the relay board here and that would free up the space in sorry about that I uh, ran out of memory um, so where I was saying uh, so this frees up the space for the mega and the uno actually has holes drilled um, into the backside here and here that match up with holes here and here so you can actually mount the Uno on top of the Mega. All Arduinos are set up this way. So as long as I can fit the Mega into this area here, I can basically stack these two that way and then this board, the motor controller board, can fit in right there um, uh, in this orientation here. And that will make for a very nice clean setup. The problem that I ran into, however, is you can see here that I've got the uh, power jack and here you've got both the USB ports for the Mega. So basically the board needs to be oriented in, in such a way that I can still gain access to those ports and of course supply power, um, which will come from the 12 volt, 12 volt battery pack. Um, now, to confirm this, I went online to make sure that I understood the powering options of the Arduino boards, and that's kind of what I wanted to touch base because I thought it was pretty interesting with all the options that are available, and I uh, thought it would be pretty cool to look that over with you guys. So I found this terrific article, and I'll include the link of course, um, but I wanted to go over some of the particulars. So it basically talks about all the power supply options. Um, kind of cautioning people against making really bad judgment calls and frying their boards, which of course uh, would be a bad thing. Um, and it's pretty much irre irrecoverable. Um, so it goes through a lot of fundamentals of um, wiring diagrams and that sort of thing. It talks about different uh, battery setups parallel series, that sort of thing. Um, and in particular, it covers the voltage requirements, which is what I really wanted to make certain that I had figured out properly. It talks about different battery options, um, like LiPo versus other options. Um, and in Rover's case, it is uh, lithium polymer. So. Um, so here is that terrific diagram. So different boards, the Mego, for example, will have an extra USB port uh, for communication with the Arduino, uh, excuse me, with the Android. But basically they're all set up the same way. You've got the USB port, you've got the um, external power jack, um, you, and you've got um, 5 volt, 3.3 volt, and VIN. Um, and I didn't actually realize that VIN was a uh, could be used as an incoming power source. So you can actually power the board through the um, VIN uh, pin connector there. Um, in Rover's case, he's going to get power through this jack, which and it works out fantastic because this jack can accept voltage up to 12 volts. It actually explains in detail further down that it's 12 and a half volts, which is exactly the, the power voltage on our batteries. So that's going to be the way in which we're going to set up Rover for the power once it's um, 
off the USB uh, connection to the computer. Uh, so coming back to the layout stuff, I just need to make sure that I need I leave enough spacing to ensure that the jack actually has room to connect into the board, of course. So looking at this again, you can see that it is going to be a pretty tight fit um, because of the way this jack is kind of enclosed in this rubber stuff. So here's a close-up of that jack. As you can see, there's quite a lot of um, plastic here. So I'm most likely just going to shave off a bunch of this stuff in order to make it a little bit um, more kind of fit friendly, um, but that shouldn't be too big a deal. So there you have it. Um, I'm not going to tackle that aspect of it just yet uh, because I kind of want to keep myself from getting distracted with this sort of tangential uh, project stuff and really focus on just getting the key pieces in place and and testing and getting Rover rolling again. So I'll focus on that, And uh, but I do feel better just knowing kind of what the options are and how to um, place those boards. Uh, yeah, it, it's, you kind of don't even realize how much effort goes into thinking through the wiring and layout stuff. Um, it's easy to get excited about the programming and, and getting you know the robot to actually come alive. Um, but a lot of work goes into just putting stuff in place in order to make that fun stuff possible. Not to say that the, you know, the mechanicals and architecture and layout stuff isn't fun. It, it, it can be, too. Um, but anyway, you know what I mean. Okay, so until next time, cheers.